Undecember is a brand new free to play multiplayer action RPG that released in October 2022. As is currently the trend in gaming this year, it's also designed to be played on both PC and mobile devices. Free to play plus mobile cross platform? I already know what you're thinking, and yeah. Going into this video, I didn't actually realise it was one of those games though. From the trailer I watched, I just assumed it to be a single player PC ARPG, as you'll see later. And December features a fully voice acted main story with cutscenes, set in a high fantasy world, it has a unique build system in how runes are linked together, as well as an ungodly amount of RNG. Aesthetically, this game feels like a mix between Diablo and Path of Exile, and seems to be trying to compete with the likes of Diablo Immortal and Torchlight Infinite. But first, sponsor. Are you afraid to be lonely this winter? Well don't be, because Raid Shadow Legends is here to keep you company. Instead of spending time with your family, you can spend time exploring hundreds of artifacts and over 600 champions, each with their own unique skills helping you smash your enemies to bits. Can't get to work because you're blocked by snow? No worries. Just stay home, play raid, and take on bosses, do dungeon runs, campaign battles, and crush noobs in the PvP arena mode. As an expert raid player myself, I suppose I should recommend some champions to you. Queen Eva. This legendary offensive succubus not only looks cool, but is one of the few champions that has a block revive debuff, making her useful in both PvP and PvE. How about Cleopteryx? Visually, she looks like the furry version of Queen Eva, but she has a hex and is available to everyone through daily login rewards. I think I just have a thing for demonic looking female characters with wings. This month is absolutely huge for Raid, as they've just released a brand new faction called the Sylvan Watchers, containing forest themed champions that will certainly appeal to anyone who plays Druid or Shaman in their MMOs. On top of that comes a ton of events, a new season of the Forge Pass where you can get super strong gear, and if you're an Amazon Prime member you can get exclusive rewards in Raid right now. There's never been a better time to get started, so new players, scan the QR code, or click my link in the description below to get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion and this epic in-game loot. You can find these rewards in your inbox right here for the next 30 days. Download now. Undecember, brand new ARPG hack and slash. Let's see if it's any good. Bit of voice Modern acting day, on the intro. Just... Bunch of dead people. Eerie. Graphics look decent. Well, good enough. And corpses are being reanimated. New world vibes. Suppose this is my character. Let's see if this remains fully voice acted all the way through, I shall we? Move around holding left click. Starting off at level 100 right off the bat. I'm guessing this is one of those games where it gives you a teaser of what's to come and then I'm going to go back to level one. Combat feels pretty fun. I can spam my abilities quite a lot. Damage numbers look good. Spin to win. And that's given me a bow. I guess this is like just giving me a taste for different combat styles. I like the blood splatters everywhere when you kill things. The audio visual feedback is pretty good. Straight away the combat just feels good. I love that the game started this way, just immediately giving me a taste for multiple different combat styles. The game's fun as soon as you load in. Now I'm sure it's going to bring it back in a sec, but yeah this is probably the best way you can start an ARPG. Combat feels impactful, well animated. Go inside here, mage staff. Typically I do play mages. Let's see if mages is fun in this game. You've got a blink ability. Right click. Oh, that's cool. I like that the ability just kind of like bounces everywhere and has crazy AoE. Very positive early impressions of the combat. Summon some kind of artifact. Is it just gonna purge the land? Yeah, big new world vibes here. Pretty cool intro. Oh, so this is where we make our character, is it? So male or female? Both character models look really good. Just be male. A few different hair types. Okay, so you don't have a lot of control on the character customization. I don't think I can even have a beard. Okay, character customization is a bit lacking. The lazy peon. And we have awoken. Ten years later. What on earth is that dinosaur creature? There's like a giant fortress on top of its back. Cool. NPCs are still voice acted when I talk to them. It's not just for the intro. Wrecked. Sword, wand, or bow. What do we want to go for? Not really too sure what weapon to build, to be honest, because during the intro, the gameplay for all three weapon types was pretty good. I guess we'll just go with sword. So yeah, like I predicted, now I don't have any abilities. I've just got 
right click. During the time of making this video, the game's sitting at 44% positive reviews, which is pretty low. So far, so good with the intro, but if it's 44% positive, there's got to be some major issues. Let's see how quickly it takes me to find those issues. Giant dinosaur creature's head. That's really cool. Lining the blister. What are we aiming for? What are we shooting? Oh, we're shooting the thing giving us a lift. F? Bloody hell, that's cool. Oh, it's like a giant horse monster. Bloody epic. Really cool start to the game. No complaints so far. Where's it going to start to go wrong? So now I've equipped leap attack. It's joined with this attack damage increase rune. The skill tree system seems quite interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how it progresses as you build things out. Pressing tab brings up the map. Fairly standard ARPG mapping by the looks of it. Level two. Chug the points in strength. We want to be strong. Surprising that they've put all of this effort into animating all of these NPCs. So other players have just started spawning in. I didn't even realize this was a multiplayer game. Wait, so if this is a multiplayer game with a bit of an Asian art style and it's got lots of negative reviews on Steam, I wonder what people could possibly be complaining about. What's on the cash shop? Cancer. It's an ARPG with a little bit of create problems to sell solution. So I wasn't too informed on this game going into it. I just kind of saw people talking about it and downloaded it. I didn't know it was a multiplayer game. It's also clearly an Asian game and it's free to play, which automatically means it's pay to win. Let's just see to what extent you can enjoy the game as a free to play player. Exclamation mark. Oh God. I've been playing the game for less than 30 minutes and I've already got exclamation marks to click. Is this actually a mobile game? Because opening it up, it didn't seem like a mobile game. Mobile-esque rewards, login stuff, exclamation marks to click on, battle pass, daily mission. Fuck me, is this Diablo Immortal? Mate, let me play the game for two hours before you slap me around the face with the fucking monetization dick. Like, let me get a little bit invested before you fucking pull out Bobby Kotick's schlong, fucking smack me around the face with it, and just remind me about everything that we all hate about modern gaming. Let me get a little bit invested first, okay? Little bit quick to whip your dick out, just saying. Now I need to Google if this is actually a cross-platform game. It actually is. These mobile PC cross-platform games are becoming more and more difficult to see them for what they really are. For the first 20 minutes until other players started popping up, until I'd noticed the cash shop and I've got all these exclamation marks to click on, I had no idea this was a cross-platform mobile game. I know that on the intro for this video I've probably mentioned this is a mobile PC cross-platform, but I always record the intros after I've actually recorded the gameplay experience. Pretty shocked. Let's shut the fuck up about the mobile aspect. Let's give the game a chance. Most games that are released are going to be like this from now on, so give it a fair shake of the stick. Level 5, blazing through the early levels. Looks like we're fighting Big Frank. Let's see how long he lasts. Oh, his name's Morris. Shout out to the Morrises in the chat. Comment below if your name is also Morris. Oi, he's absolutely wrecking me there. Probably shouldn't have just stood in front of that. Run away when he spins, obviously. Bunch of loot, quest complete. It's always the case with these ARPGs that the early progression feels pretty fast and satisfying. It's a few hours into the game where things start to slow down and become become a bit of a ball lake. So if I press T, you can see a little icon surround my right click attack. Basically when there's this highlight, if a mob's within range, my character's just gonna auto attack it. But it isn't an auto combat system. I do kind of wonder if this game will have an auto combat system later on because that is a common thing in mobile games. I just had a realization, something that would be incredibly smart, but also extremely insidious. So remember at the start of the game, how I was given a preview of the end game combat. It took me to level 100, all of the abilities were maxed out and the combat felt super fun. Imagine if what the game was actually giving me a preview of was an ultra end game pay to win build and just playing free to play, I'd never get to experience gameplay like that. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but it would be pretty smart to give people a taste of extreme pay to win so they're always chasing that and then they'll never actually get there. They just keep playing, getting more and more invested, chasing the gameplay experience that they had when they first opened the game, and it never comes unless they drop a few thousand dollars. Until I know for sure, I sound like a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but it makes sense in my mind. Maybe I'm completely wrong, and the gameplay that was shown off at the start of the game is something that you get to fairly quickly. I, I hope so. Another cutscene, back to this creepy bishop from before. Ah uh, yes, blood magic. My favourite. Praying to the monetization gods. Level 10, I guess. There it is. Zodiac trait unlocked. 
Creepy sound of bugs echoes throughout the darkness. Sounds like my kind of party. I've only just noticed this, but in the bottom left hand corner, it says the general area difficulty. For this one, it's normal, as well as the level of the zone. This one's level nine. Also tells you your exploration rate as well. At least you just run over the loot to pick it up. In this game, you don't have to individually click on it. I think you can get pets to loot for you in this game, but the default looting isn't that bad. Yo, this area's got a pretty big boss. First boss with a decent amount of health, actually. It takes a while to bring down. Actual mechanics as well, things I need to dodge. There it is, level 12, bunch of XP, more loot. Zodiac Trials, press the Z key. Oh, dude, I completely forgot about this bloody talent tree. I haven't added anything to it since the game gave me the tutorial. God, I've completely forgot to keep on top of my exclamation marks. Mate, there just needs to be one big fucking button on the side of the screen, and you just click it, and it says... Receive all exclamation mark bullshit. You click it and it just sucks all of the loot from all of the menus. Or maybe that's too convenient. Maybe they would charge 99 cents a month for that button to exist. Probably would, wouldn't they? The bastards. Whirlwind. Well, that's going to be an insanely good ability. Whirlwind is always good for any melee class in any game ever. Immediately equipping that. I like that this is one of those games where a lot of the armor actually visually appears on your character because there's a lot of Korean MMOs that you play where you'll equip a new bit of armor and the portrait for the piece of gear is completely different to what you're wearing, but it doesn't make a visual difference to your character. So far, pretty much everything has made a difference visually. Test our new ability. Whirlwind. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I'm doing a lot more damage now. Those ability upgrades have made a big difference. Big George pops out. Look at that belly. The masculine urge to drum on such a glorious belly. Oh, look at his little feet. Look at that fucking jiggle. Peak masculinity. <laughs> Here it is. Now we're going to fight Big George. And thanks to my spin to win, I can now attack and move at the same time. Something I do wish this game did have was like a dodge button. Like space bar, shift, or control. Something that you can press to just do a dodge. Taking some big damage on this one. Oh, you got to dodge those mechanics, Craig. This boss has presented a significant step up in difficult. Cool yeah, that's it, Craig. Just run into every single projectile. Donkey! Oi! <laughs> Have a little battle of practice with ARPGs. Okay, big damage. Fuck him up. I think I got a little bit cocky towards the end. I thought, yeah, I've got him. Took my eye off the ball. I'm getting text messages left, right, and center. So that's distracting me. I didn't die because I'm bad at the game. I died because of distractions. And he was on one hit as I bloody died. There it is. <laughs> Oh, that's a good way to go. What a creature. There's so many cutscenes in this game. It's way more story driven than I'd have ever expected. And all of these cutscenes are still voice acted as well. Storytelling is done surprisingly well by ARPG standards. So as much as this is a free to play Asian pay to win ARPG, most likely, seems like you can probably play it and enjoy it for free. Enjoy all the story and whatnot. And we're at the next questing hub. So the towns in this game are very small. Peddler and blacksmith basically in the same level locations. So now we're learning about alchemy and brewing. I forgot we're playing a mobile game. I can complete it immediately if I want to pay one of whatever this is. I like the character select screen. On the first chapter, it was my character walking through a desert, and now I've gone to the next chapter, it seems to be him in an inn. I wonder if the character select screen keeps changing as you progress through the game. Wait, we can test this, just teleport to act one. Yeah, the character selection screen changes based on the act you're in. That's really well done, to be fair. Apologies, Eden. For the next 15 minutes, you're going to have to sit through me slurping my uh, protein shake. Because everyone knows that if you slurp milkshake, it actually tastes better. You get more flavor out of it. <sighs> the way the map exploration works is you don't actually need to fully chart every single inch of an area. You just need to find all of the objectives or points of interest. For example, I didn't go over here, but the map is unlocked because I've found all of the objectives. This area is now 100% complete. Another boss with actual mechanics. The last time I fought a boss with mechanics, I got fucked. And now I've actually got some decent abilities. I'm almost dead and it takes a minute for me to use my healing potion again. I'm gonna die, aren't I? No, so we're gonna dodge everything. Whack, whack, spin, kill him! Ugh! Just about got him. Almost had another embarrassing death. 
We're getting deeper and deeper into these caves and the monsters are starting to reflect that. It's almost like you're diving deeper into the ocean and you start to come across those weird fish that have torches on their heads. Pretty cool design, really. Oh, I see. Each of these levels have recommended element resists. 20 fire magic damage, which I don't have. Maybe that's why I'm taking so much damage. Illusion Axe. Summon Axe is the circle around the caster. That's what I need. Hunger HP on every attack hit. Yes, we need that. I think I understand why my character's been so bloody weak now. Haven't been keeping up with the progression and buying all of the correct runes. Yeah, this rune enhancing system, it seems like there's a lot of depth and a lot of RNG to it. I can see how this could be paid to win later on. I've been like staring at it for about 20 minutes trying to build my character up a bit. Got some upgrades, but damn, I can imagine that getting super complex and super frustrating at end game. Yeah, I'm doing like double the damage that I was doing before. I was certainly in need of some big upgrades. Act 1 allowed me to get away with being lazy when it came to upgrades, but Act 2, you kind of need to keep on top of it a little bit more. One hitting these mobs now. That feels good to sit down for a bit, work on my character and come back and be so much stronger. I'm hardly taking damage now as well. Oh, let's try my new ability, Whirling Axes. How long does it last? Just perpetually. That's cool. Oh, that looks good with the Whirling Axes as I'm doing the spinny ability. Got my first ever rare drop. Nothing else has dropped and has just been straight up yellow. Everything else is something that I've had to make yellow by crafting. Level 20. Party Dungeon Unlocked. Okay, so we're finally getting to the multiplayer stuff. I kind of forgot that this game was even multiplayer for a sec. The only time I've ever seen other players is just in the town hub. Didn't think it was a major part of the game. Yo, did I just get a yellow drop that I can actually use? Yes, I did. Okay, let's identify it. Yo, that's a massive upgrade. Very nice. To tell you the truth, right now I'm having a great time playing this game. And it's a weird feeling because I know that it's not going to last due to the business model. The fact that the game's like 40% positive reviews when I downloaded it. It's clearly just going to absolutely fuck you or disappoint you later on with the monetization. But for now, early on in the game, a few hours in, I am having a great time. I'm really enjoying it. But I know that that feeling of enjoyment is just going to be temporary. It's, it's kind of like a bit of a sad feeling, really. What is this pet even doing? I haven't even noticed. He's just following me around or is he helping me fight? He's just standing there. Is he looting? Pet. What do pets do? Auto loot unavailable. Item disassemble and sell unavailable. So what's the point? So I can have the pet follow me around and do nothing. Or I can, like, pay real money for him to actually have a function. He's a cute little guy. Right, let's have a look at some of the other pets. Chihuahua, this thing. Oh, yes, that's good. A little rat. I might as well dismiss the pet if it doesn't actually do anything. I suppose the auto loot could be nice. We'll just blaze through the levels a lot quicker. I think this great sword's a lot better, unfortunately. Got 39% attack damage on it. Let's try and re-roll it a bit. Oh, my God. Is that a degrade? It's a massive degrade. No. I want to use a great sword. I clicked enchant and it's only got two of these little things on it and the values are so low. Oh, there's my first little taste of getting pissed off with the RNG gear enhancement. And I'm only level 21. I'm sure it's absolute cancer end game. Right, so this is the final zone of act two. I'm expecting this to be the final boss fight. Looks like we got a big boy on our hands. Looks like something from Attack on Titan. Yeah, Attack on Titan vibes here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the final encounter of Act 2, is it? A smaller version of that big titan. Terror Chief Galanus. When we fought the final boss of Act 1, we actually died. Is that going to happen for the boss of Act 2? I think me understanding how to upgrade my gears made a bit of a difference, hasn't it? Helps if you deal damage, doesn't it? There we go. Oh, we... <sighs> oh, he almost got me at the end. And he's dead. What are you waiting for? Arrest this rune hunter and take them to prison now! Really? She's gonna arrest me because some guy said he saw me do something bad? My word against his? Where's the due process? <sighs> arrest first, ask questions later, I suppose. And with that, we've arrived at Act 3, about four hours in at the moment. Let's go to Character Select and see if there's another new character menu. There is. I really do like how each act of the game has its own character select screen. Very cool. I think I'm about four or more hours in at this point, so that's probably a good point to wrap up this first impressions. So after playing Undecember for a few hours, my first impressions are as follows. I like that the game gives you a taste of end game range, mage and melee combat right at the beginning to help you make your playstyle choice. The game is fully voice acted, however, not to a super high quality. 
Some of the cutscenes are found to be quite cool. The absolute best thing about this game, in my opinion, is that every piece of equipable gear actually has its own visual representation on your character that matches how the gear looks in the gear portrait. I've played so many RPGs where this isn't the case and it always annoys me. As much as the rune system is rammed with RNG and stuff that will bait you to pay to win later, I think it's a cool idea on a surface level and made me think for myself when optimising the power of my abilities. I thought the combat felt pretty good. It's not on the level of Lost Ark or anything, but I thought the audiovisual feedback was well done and it kept me engaged during my time playing. I thought the character select screen was cool, where the background scene is animated and different depending on the act you're currently in. And as far as mobile, PC, cross-platform ARPGs go, this one has the most PC-like user interface I've seen so far. So much so that I didn't recognise that this was even a mobile game until about 30 minutes in when I started seeing the exclamation marks pop up. This game has the correct formula to absolutely suck money out of you. Free to play, plus fun enough that a lot of people will play till the end game, at which point you're invested enough to get milked. So many RNG systems and power gain potential that I can imagine people spending thousands of dollars on this game. As much as I had fun playing Undecember, in the back of my mind I knew that due to what type of game this is, there's a certain point I'll eventually reach where the game would just fuck me. Unfortunately, Undecember comes with Root Kit Anti-Cheat that isn't uninstalled automatically when you uninstall the game from Steam. You'll need to go to your Windows registry and delete it manually yourself. This is a pretty huge deal breaker for a lot of people, and all quality of life stuff is locked behind the cash shop such as pets actually doing something, limited inventory space, using crafting materials without taking them out of your storage automatically, and so on. Overall, Undecember feels like a game where they designed the cash shop, RNG, and monetization first, then attached a game to it later. There's some things that I enjoyed about the game and thought were pretty cool, but the cons are all deal breakers. Usually for games like this I'd say something like, play the game for free until it stops being fun. But this game comes with literal root kit malware installed, so in this case, don't bother with it at all. Diablo 4 is coming in 2023, so suppress your need for a new ARPG until that drops. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Undecember in the comments below. Are there any other deal breakers that I forgot to mention in this video? What do you think about mobile cross-platform games becoming more and more PC-like in terms of visuals with every month that goes by? Social media on screen, appease the algorithm gods with a visit to the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.